Hello and welcome. This is Susan Malloy of Silver Lady Stamping and I want to thank you for joining me today. I'm going to show you today how to make a card combining two stamp sets, a good man and mountaineer. So I'm going to switch the view and show you what the card looks like. So here's the card has a lot of detail to it, a lot of color to it as well. So as you can see, the background is the is based on a mountain, mountain air stamp set, the moon, and the, the trees. Um, the clouds are actually from the new after the storm stamp set. And then the two images that are from the A Good Man stamp set are the, the dad holding the little girl and then the sentiment. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to set this aside, I'm going to show you the stamp sets. So this is the, this is uh, A Good Man. You get the glare out of it. So this is, and this is the image that we're using in today's card. I also have something planned with this card. But the reason that I made the card that I did was because I just li I liked the idea that, well, in this image and in that image, actually, um, that the man is holding children and they're facing away. And they're clearly looking at something. Now, if Stampin' Up! had a stamp set that included fireworks, then I probably would have included that image uh, that they would be looking at fireworks, but we don't have that kind of a, a stamp set. So I started thinking about it and, and thought that the Mountain Air stamp set would be a good one because it can make it look like um, they're out in the, in the, woods and you know in nature and it has a great moon image in that stamp set uh, so it, which is a distinctive stamp set so you get kind of different color variations in one stamp so I thought that would be kind of nice so here's this is the mountaineer stamp set and this is not a new stamp set for the catalog this is a carryover from uh, the previous catalog and what's nice about this stamp set is it's reversible. Uh, so the images in this stamp set, as, as it's shown, so this stamp and this stamp, they're actually the same stamp, but you get this image when you flip it to the, to the other side. And you get this image when you flip it kind of right side up where the, all of the, um, and detail on the stamp is. So this would be more of a background stamp. So the mountains, these two images, these are also just one stamp. Uh, and again, this is the back side, the flat side, which would give you kind of a background uh, stamped image uh, that would be kind of like, you know, something that would be in the distance. And then the mountains, the, or the right side up that has the detail on it and again this these two same thing one image but you can use both sides and then this one as well so they're real and, and oh in the cloud same thing you can you know in the moon honestly you, you can do so much with this stamp set i just love it and then the other one that I'm bringing in today is the new one after the storm. And what we're going to be using from this stamp set is the cloud. Now, Mountain Air has a cloud too, but I didn't really like the puffy part of it. Uh, that might be good for a card you make that shows a sunny day, but I wasn't really overly keen about using it for this card. So I really prefer the cloud images that are in this stamp set. Again, this is a distinctive stamp set, and when which means that you get the different color variations just from one stamp. Some stamps 
you in uh, in Stampin' Up's uh, array of stamp sets, you have to do two-step stamping. Um, but in this case, it's just one stamp and you'll get the color variations. So the ink pads that we're gonna be using today are, oh, let me move this around. We're gonna use um, Night of Navy, uh, Bami Blue. We're gonna have kind of a, a lot of them, but we're not gonna do a lot of stamping with them. I just wanna use several of them for the sky and do some blending. So we're gonna use the Night of Navy, actually, I'm gonna use that for the sentiment, uh, and I'm gonna use it for um, the father's blue jeans, and that's about it. Um, the balmy blue we're going to use for the sky. We're going to use uh, the two two new col in colors. We're going to use fresh freesia and polished pink. And both of those I'm going to bring in for the sky. And I'll show you again how that looks. So if you can see, let me give you a kind of a close up. So I made I, I colored in with sponge daubers the blue. You can see I did some uh, balmy blue, and then I came back in with the uh, fresh freesia. And then uh, polished pink as well to give it kind of a, you know, an evening sky, almost, um, you know, just, a, you know, sometimes when the sun sets, you get a lot of uh, color variations. And so that's kind of what I had them looking at, the moon and the sky. Then I'm also going to bring in another new in color, the evening evergreen, which I'm going to use for some of the trees in the distance. And I'm going to use Mossy Meadow um, for some of the greenery more in the foreground. So, so I'm going to use those. And I'm going to use some Memento Black, uh, which we're going to use for the uh, images in the background. We're going to start with some black. I'm going to use some Stampin' Blends. I'll bring those in. So we have a bunch of Stampin' Blends. Let's see what we got. So I have, because we're gonna use these to color in the clothing, you know, the, the dad and the little girl, their, their clothing and their skin. So I'm gonna use some uh, Fresh Freesia. And this one is a light balmy blue. I have a light Night of Navy. Uh, this is dark, pale papaya, but you could just as easily. I'm going to use it for, um, well, I'm not sure I am going to use this one. I might yeah, I use it for some clothes, but I'm not sure I will use it. I pulled it out just thinking I might. I'm not sure I will, but it's a possibility. And then I have the... I think I have the dark and the light crumb cake. Yep, I have dark and light crumb cake. And I have a light a smoky slate, which I was going to use to color in the dad's shirt. And then I also have um, ivory. And this one comes in a combo pack with bronze. And I think they're kind of like hidden gems. I'm not sure. You know, when you're looking at your Stampin' Blends, people are oftentimes looking at the colors. And they, they may overlook the combo pack of ivory and bronze and they're both really nice colors and I use the ivory one for uh, skin color um, you can use a little bit uh, darker coloration like a crumb cake or even darker if you need to depending on skin color uh, ivory is uh, is a good one if um, well dare I say it, if they're gonna color in white people um, so that's the one that I typically use. And then um, I'm going to use uh, some gray granite um, ribbon. Just, you know, I put a little bit behind the sentiment. Just, I put a little piece of it there. I'm not sure it's necessary, but um, I'll just bring that in at the end. Um, and then I'm also going to use um, the uh, posted for you um punch now for my let me move that over for my the card that i made i use the timeless 
label, I think it's called. Um, but that after I, after I made it, I realized that punch is discontinued. So um, I think another good uh, option is this um, posted for you. So we can we can use that. Okay, uh, and I oh and cardstock getting the cardstock. Um, so I'm using for today's card using gray granite, and I cut it the long way at four and a quarter, and you will score it at five and a half, and then a card layer of for for the top the top card layer. You're going to cut it at. Uh, five and a quarter by four. And this is the one, this is the piece that we're going to begin stamping on. So, all right, why don't we go ahead and get started. So, what I've done is taken, I've taken an eye block and I took out my background stamp of, you know, in the distance of trees which is the, um, let me see, I'll get that one. So that's, that's this image right here, this image. But I'm flipping it over so that I get the backside. And this backside is just flat. It has no detail on it. And I'm going to use the Evening Evergreen ink pad. And I'm, I sometimes ink my images up upside down rather than doing the image on top and I don't know if there's a right or wrong but honestly sometimes that's just how I do it all right so oh actually you know what that's not how I wanted to do it let me let me uh, clean that off you know what I wanted to start out with first I wanted to start out with black we're going to come back with the evening evergreen but hold on, I'm glad I caught that before I laid it down. Not that it would be the end of the world, it would be fine. I would just do it a little bit differently. All right, what I wanna do is start, cause let me show you again on the card that I made. So this background, I started with um, black. So I did it in black <coughs> and then I flipped it over to the detailed side with the trees and I did it in black again and then I, did it in green ink so we'll do it in black and again i'm just gonna i like sometimes i like to ink up my stamps this way and then i can see how much ink i'm putting on it anyway it's just my thing whatever works for you okay so about a quarter of the way down now i'm going to try to not put my head in this thing oh and one more thing, I have my piercing mat, which unfortunately is no longer available, but if you have something that you can put your card on that gives it a little bit of, um, you know, uh, something thick, you'll get a better adherence because these, you know, with the photopolymer stamps, you need to have something to press into. So I don't know, I think that looks about good. I'm gonna, well, it might help if I put it the right way. <laughs> All right, I'm going to just do it in that. And you know what? One more thing, because I'm doing it off the paper. So let's just do it this way, because I already know I'm going to get ink on my, um, the sponge pad. Okay, let's try it again. All right, I'm going to give it a good press. Okay, so that's the background. All right, now I am going to just clean that off real quickly. Here's my cleaning pad. Okay. And I'm going to now flip over the image. So you're just going to turn it upside down. 
get it on there straight. Okay. Straighten out the underneath. Okay, now I'm going to move this over so we can see it straight. And I'm going to ink it up in black again. Now I am going to stamp it kind of right on top of that, about there. Let's see how that comes out. Hopefully that will give me the image that I'm, that I'm hoping for. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's good. So you can see right there, the background, which almost looks like mountains. Um, and then on top of that are the trees kind of in the distance. All right. So now I want to switch to green because now we're coming more to the, we're bringing the trees more to the fore, foreground. So I think what I'm gonna do, now on my, the card that I made, I used only mossy meadow, but I was thinking that this evening evergreen might be a good one because it's nice and dark. Okay. All right, so we'll do that evening evergreen. Then we'll bring the, I don't wanna do the, the trees exactly in the same placement as the ones behind them. So I'll do a little off center. All right, let's see how this goes. Okay, well, that looks all right. We're getting more to the foreground. I think I'm gonna start to move into the mossy meadow though. I actually think I may like the mossy meadow better. The evening evergreen is dark and that's what I wanted to try, but I actually think the mossy meadow might be a better option. So if you're watching this on a replay and you're not making the card along with me, let's see, uh, you can wait until I, until I put down the mossy meadow and then you can see what you think. But I'm thinking that you should just go with the mossy meadow and not the evening evergreen. However, um, I think you can do whatever, whatever you want. All right, so let's, we'll put down one more layer of trees. Yeah, I kind of like that better. Okay. And we're going to keep our mossy meadow out. Let me clean that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to ink up the same stamp, but only on the bottom. So I think you can see, like, I'm not sure exactly what this is supposed to do. Maybe all the debris, you know, on a, on a forest floor you know, pine needles and um, moss and things like that. And I thought it would be kind of nice to have that be what's underfoot where the man is standing. So as you can see, I brought it, I, I stamped in several places all the way down just on that bottom piece to create kind of a forest floor. So that's what I'm going to do here. Now, you can mask off, um, just to be sure. But actually, I am going to just dab it. I'm gonna eyeball it. I did that for my when I was making the card sample, and it actually uh, worked out fine. So I'm just doing I'm just doing that. Okay. All right. So I did not did not put ink for the trees. Okay. K. 
Okay. See how that comes out? It comes out actually kind of good. Now, there is a little bit of a line, but that's okay. Doesn't matter. And I'm going to do the same thing. We'll do it again. Okay. All right, and I think we can maybe do it one or two more times just to get the forest floor completely covered. And then we can move on. And we can move on to coloring in the sky. Okay, and I think just one more time we'll do it. Okay. Give it a good press. And there we go. All right. So I'm just going to clean my stamp. And we are all set with that image. And we're all set with the green ink, the mossy meadow. Okay, I'm going to remove my stamp and set it aside. All right, so now... <clears throat> Now what we can do is uh, begin to, oh, the, you know what we also need that I didn't mention to you was some sponge daubers because we're going to be coloring in the sky. So I'm going to get my blue one, um, my fresh freesia, and pink. Set those aside. And I'm going to start with balmy blue. Okay, I'm going to remove my piercing mat because I don't need that for right now. And that'll give me a nice flat surface to move this around. I almost feel like I want to flip this now. Okay. All right, so I think you can see that, right? So what we're going to do, we're just going to pick up some of the color on the stamp pad, but you're going to um, just tap it on your craft paper and begin to just lightly off the paper, off on the craft paper, and then circle onto the cardstock and just give it a light touch because we're going to keep going over it. Oh, my cat is complaining, if you can hear him. He wants to jump on my lap and this now is not the time. <laughs> he wants a little bit of attention. He's saying, hey, mom, uh, what are you doing? How come you're not uh, paying attention to me? I'm super important right now. <laughs> I don't know if you have a pet. Um, but they, when they want your attention, they want it. They don't have time to wait for you. Okay, so you just want to do it um, in circular motions. Um, okay, so before, now I'm going to continue to um, to do that, but you know what I neglected to bring in was my gray granite uh, ink pad. I'm going to see if I can get it real quick. All right, where's my gray granite? Got it? There's always something that you forget to bring over, right? So gray granite, we're going to need that for the moon. So I need to bring in the moon image on the stamp set right here. Put that on my block. This moon has a lot of detail. Let me see how dark is that? Yeah. Hmm. 
Was it in fact gray granite? Maybe, hold on. You know what, I'm starting to wonder if I didn't use smoky slate, because that gray granite looks awfully brown. Oh yeah, I think I used the smoky slate, not, not gray granite. You would think that gray granite would be a darker version of the smoky slate, but honestly, when I put it down, it looks more brown. It looks more like crumb cake. Very, very strange. Okay, so I'm using smoky slate. All right, let's see if I can get this moon up there. We could have you could have put it down a little bit farther, but uh, didn't give myself a lot of space. So I'll do it right here. Okay, here we go. Now the other thing, let me clean that too while I have it. Now on my original card. I did this piece down a little bit um, farther, so you can see I had gave myself more sky space, but that's okay. Sometimes in the woods, the trees are higher. I need to now pull out clouds. So I'm going to use, there are two cloud images. One's a big one and one's a small one. I'm just going to use the small one. Okay, I'm going to remove the cloud image and I'm going to put all right here's the and I'm going to actually put the cloud kind of over the moon as if it's drifting by in front of the in front of the moon Kind of like that, right? And I'm going to do another one on the other side. And I'm only going to, I think on the other side, I'm just going to do a partial one because I think if I do, you know, a full one, it'll be a little bit too much. And I want to have some sky open in order to put some color there. Okay, so I'm just going to leave it like that. I'll clean it. And this is going to look slightly different than the other one, but that's okay. That's what that's what happens, right? No two cards ever end up looking exactly the same. No matter how much you think that you're going to um, create the same card, most times it comes out a little bit different. All right, so I don't need the smoky slate anymore. All right, so what I think I'm going to do at this point is maybe bring in a little bit more blue color. Color that in. Okay. And because a lot of the stuff around it is darker, it doesn't matter that a little blue gets on them because you're not going to notice it. All right, so what I want to do, I'm going to close. Clo no, I'm not going to close it up. I'm going to set it aside. I think what I'm going to do now is bring in my fresh freesia. And you're going to do the same thing. Just as you dab it, dab a little bit off because you just want to kind of have a... Uh, a little bit of color, but not a lot. You can always come back in f with more. So I, I almost was thinking about, you know, having it have a little bit of an Aurora Borealis effect. You know how, how you've seen them. 
I've never I've never seen any in person, but you know when you've I've seen them like on TV or online, and it shows like the swirling colors, kind of like that. All right, so that's the fresh freesia, and I'm going to bring in now. I'm going to bring in the polished pink, and get uh, give a lit just a little bit of pink in there. And at first I wasn't sure that pink was necessary because the purple kind of blended with the blue and then I added in the pink. And you can see on this one, um, I added pink on the top and it kind of kind of did make a difference. I just, I liked it anyway. So it's up to you. I wanted to make a really pretty evening sky. Okay, just, I mean, if you do just a little, you don't need a lot. And it makes it super, super colorful. And I think, I think in fact, that's all I'm going to do for the coloring of the sky. Um, actually, let me see, do I have, do I dare, I don't know, do I dare use the Knight of Navy and try to get it toned down to make it a little darker, because as you can see, so this one, here's the one, the, obviously my card, and this one seems to be more pink and um, with the fresh freesia. This one has a little bit darker. I don't know if I dare. I'll do, I'll just do like a super, super, because I'm always thinking on this one that the, the balmy blue might have been too light, but you know what? I'll give it a, well, if I screw it up, then you know what? You can, <laughs> you can use it as a lesson learned and not do what I do, right? Well, so far, so good. Maybe this is the color I should have used to begin with by really taking most of the color out. Um, so dip it into the Knight of Navy, really get it, dab the majority of it off. So you're blending in some, if you can see, so there's some balmy blue, you have the light sky, which is left over from daytime, and then you have, it's mixed in with some darker, blue like especially over here you can see and then the fresh freesia and the pink so this night sky is starting to creep in um and it's a very colorful sky to see along with the uh, details of the moon okay so um for the dad and the little girl so this was the image this is the image that you're going to stamp. I just stamped it in um, with Memento Black, you know, the Memento Tuxedo Black ink. Um, and then there's no coordinating die, so you have to fussy cut it. So just because there's no point in you watching me stamp and fussy cut an image, I went ahead and did it. So I'm gonna set the card aside and Let's see, what we're gonna do first, um, let me see if I can, let me bring it in a little bit a little closer. Right, so you can see kind of what I'm doing. All right, well, okay, there we go. So you can sort of see what I'm doing. And I'm going to, start with my um, ivory because there's not a lot that needs to be done so I'll color in I'll color in the little girl's arm and then she has a little bit of space under her shirt between her shirt and her pants which might be a little bit of her back and then we have dad's arm holding her we have a little bit of dad's neck 
and we have the little girl's foot. She's barefoot. And I think that's really it in terms of skin to be colored. All right. Now, as far as, hmm, I'm going to use color. He's wearing, I'm assuming he's wearing blue jeans. So I'm using the light Night of Navy because you know how dark, dark Night of Navy is. It's like it just blocks everything out. And it, this is pretty dark as well. And I use the marker side, um, the thicker side. And um, you can always tell on the markers, like this is the thick side. So it has a little mark on it. This is thick and this is this is thin. And it, not only that, but then on the flip side, it shows you. This is the brush part. And this is like the marker side. So I'm using the brush side because that's just what I happen to prefer. But you use whichever side you're comfortable with. And I'm just going to straight on color. I'm just going to fill in the spots. I'm not like a fantastic colorer. I mean, I'm not a bad colorer, but we have some demonstrators that you've probably seen that really are talented artists and have good coloring skills. Yeah, I'm not one of those people. I just do your simple coloring. And honestly, these images have so much detail, you know, Stampin' Up's uh, images have so much detail really all you need to do is just you know fill in fill in the, the spaces all right so pretty simple okay so that's it for the night of navy i think i'm going to use a little bit of dark crumb cake for his shoes i don't know what kind of shoes he's wearing but so many guys wear like brown shoes so guess what that's what he's wearing, brown shoes. Now, oh, you know what else I'm going to use this one for? I think I'm going to give him brown hair. Let's give Dad dark brown hair. And that's using, again, the dark crumb cake. So it's like a sandy color hair. And then I think I'll, let's see what this looks like for the little girl. This is light crumb cake oh yeah that looks good i just didn't want them both to have the same head you know like the same color hair it makes it look like they got a blended head all right and i'm going to use smoky slate for for dad's shirt so many guys like to have you know just simple colors in their clothing And that, my son loves that. He'll wear like blue and gray. Those are his favorite colors. Okay, oh, and then I got oh, this piece right here. Almost forgot about that. That's dad's sleeve. It's hard to say sometimes when there's a lot, a lot of imagery going on. You're like, okay, what, you know, what is supposed to be what? What am I coloring in? And then you sometimes end up coloring in the wrong thing with the wrong color. Okay, so there's Dad's shirt in gray. And now all we have to do is color in um, little girl's outfit. So little girls love purple. So I'm going to use some, let's see, light fresh freesia. And we'll give her a purple shirt. I'm going to color right through her ponytail. Okay, that's about as simple as it gets. And I think what I'll do is give her some balmy blue pants. All right, we'll just give her some light blue pants. That's what I'm using, balmy blue. Okay. Guess what? Coloring is all done. That's all there is to it.
so now we want to bring in some dimensionals. And I think I'm going to use just the, the mini dimensionals because the, the, it's kind of narrow on his legs. And the big dimensionals I'd have to cut into pieces. So let's just, you know, I hate that the fact that you got to watch me put dimensionals on this thing. So, oops, let's just put a whole bunch. All right. Sticks to your fingers. They're so small. It's hard to navigate them. There we go. There's that piece. Okay. All right. Actually, some of the for the upper piece of the image, we can probably put. Oops. Not that. Put the larger ones in. Cover more space. All right. We'll take the backings off. You know, I think for like a week or two, I wasn't making any cards. And I'm like, I don't know what happened, but I just, you know, wasn't. And uh, I was like, oh God, I gotta get back to it. I just was feeling sort of lost about it. I lost my mojo. I think that sometimes happens. And then I finally got back into it. And, I, and, I, and now I'm having fun again. All right, let's just go out a little bit. All right, and... All right, we can we can put dad somewhere about here there we go there we go so now isn't that cute i mean already we're not even done we're almost done but not quite um so we want to um have my sentiment and I have my little block. Oh, here it is. All right, so, boom. And you generally just need a scrap of, oops, I have a smudge on it. Uh, just a scrap of uh, white cardstock so that you can stamp your sentiment. Okay. Okay, and I'm doing this in Night of Navy. You can do it in black too, it doesn't matter. Okay. Let's see how that looks. Oh, that came out good. And it says, being a good dad starts with being a good man. I like that sentiment. It's very true. All right, I want to clean my stamp before I go any further. And I want to take my punch, the posted for you punch, which actually I think is actually called rectangular mail, a, a rectangular postage punch or something like that. Okay. You know what I'm going to do? Because I want to get a good grip on it. So I'm going to take a piece of post-it note. Let's see. And I'm going to take the piece of post-it note and use it as a handle. And that way I can get it in there. If it will stick... Okay, let's see if I can get it to stick. Otherwise, I'll get a different piece of post-it note. All right, let's try it again. All right, so if you ever need to, uh, if you ever have a piece that you need to punch and it's too small to really get in there, just 
put a piece of post-it note on it. Here we go. And you just peel your post-it note away. And you're all set to go. Okay, throw that away. Okay, now, what I also did was I cut, I punched out two pieces of a Knight of Navy and what I wanted to do was to have it, you know, like sticking up. So what I'm gonna do is roughly cut it, you know, kind of down the, down the middle or as best I can. So I'm not gonna need two of them. All right, and I need my, I prefer to use my liquid glue, but you can use you know, the stamp and seal if you prefer. There's nothing wrong with that. All right, so I'm gonna take my sentiment and I'm gonna flip it over and just put a little bit on the back side. And then I'm going to line this up so there's a little bit of the blue sticking up on the top. Right, and now you're gonna do the same thing on the bottom. Put a little bit of glue Take the other piece and do the same thing. Just kind of line it up so that there's a little bit of blue sticking out. All right, so now, look, you have a little bit of framing around it. Kind of nice, right? Okay, so now, on this one, I had done a uh, piece of ribbon. Uh, let's see, here's my ribbon. Now, this part is totally optional because quite honestly, um, the jury is still out on this one as, as to how I feel about it. And whether or not a piece of ribbon goes with a card that is based in the forest. So, I don't know. I'm not convinced, but they're not really in the forest, are they? Okay, so let me move that aside. And I'm not going to, oh, you know what I wanna do at the same time? I wanna put some dimensionals because I'm not gluing down the ribbon. The dimensionals are gonna hold it in place. I'm just gonna put three right up the center. Okay, there we go. And I'm just gonna fold it, you know, kind of like that, that's all. And lay it right there, lay it on the card and you know what, and I got a piece of dimensional stuck. Uh, and then I'm just going to, you know what, let me move this up a little bit so you can see. So I'm just holding it in place. And I am going to just lay it right on top of the ribbon. So there it is. So you can see, there's just a little bit sticking there and a little bit there, and you don't have to glue down the ribbon. Um, but here's a tip, in case you have to glue ribbon down onto any of your cards. Um, the Stamp and Seal Plus is great for that. The liquid glue is not great at it, and neither is the regular Stamp and Seal. But if you have Stamp and Seal Plus, it's great to adhere anything that's more that, that's difficult to, to adhere down. So that's just my tip for the day. Okay, so now we're ready to adhere it to our card layer. So I'm just gonna put some liquid glue on the back. And center it. A little bit got out. Okay. 
And there we have it. And there's the card. And here's the original one that I did. So they're slightly different, slightly different, but still all good. Um, and that is, that is the card. So I want to thank you for joining me today and making this card with me. And I hope you enjoyed it. And I would ask that you subscribe to my channel and click on the little bell and so that you can be notified every time I post a new video. So thank you again and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.